Good morning, everyone. My name is Adam Keough, Knowledge Management and Learning Director for Catholic Relief Services, or CRS, El Salvador, and I work with our Agricultural Landscape Restoration Initiative. I'll be moderating today's session. We've got a great panel. Uh, the title of our session today is Manage Soils to Manage Water. Our session title was inspired by a 2010 article by one of our panelists, Jenny Barron, that challenged us to focus on protecting soils to promote green water for rain-fed agriculture. It has since become the mantra for CRS with smallholder farmers and water resource management in Central America through what we call Water Smart Agriculture. In this session, the panelists will share experiences from El Salvador and Central America on promoting Water Smart Agriculture, which is CRS's approach to regenerative agriculture that emphasizes soil restoration and water resource conservation. Yesterday, my colleague Paul Hicks spoke on the vital few practices that we promote to that are managed soil covers with crop residue and cover crops, introduce live barriers, and promote integrated soil fertility management. Today, our presenters will share how promoting these basic conservation practices through locally led extension work has spread these practices across multiple landscapes in El Salvador while, pro while providing co-benefits and improved yields and input cost reduction. Introduce our uh, co-facilitator, Jack Alexander, founder of Synergy Resource Solutions. Jack will lead a question and answer session a little later on, so please take note of any, any questions you'd like to ask the panelists. I'd like to uh, welcome our panelists, uh, Carla Lara, who is the monitoring coordinator for Catholic Relief Services El Salvador, Carla Trujillo Peñate, who is the founder of Tierra Saludable Amayale. Byron Kasun, who is the founder of Raindrop Restoration Services in El Salvador as well. And Jenny Barron, professor of agricultural water management at the Swedish University of Agricultural Science. While this session will highlight multiple success stories, we know that we don't have it all figured out. One of our goals of this session is to inspire researchers to work with us to better understand the impacts of water smart agriculture on soils and water resources. We are collecting a lot of data from the field on farmers, costs, yields, agricultural practices, soil health, and water resources, and we'd love to share this data to dig deeper into hard questions and demonstrate impacts across the landscape in El Salvador. To start the session off, it's my pleasure to invite Carla Lara to the stage. Carla is the Monitoring and Evaluation Coordinator for El Salvador, CRS El Salvador. Carla will take us on a little tour of the agricultural landscape in El Salvador to show us where and how we're working with water smart agriculture. Thank you, Adam. Like he said, my name is Carla Lara, and I've been working with CRS for almost two years now. And I just want to take a few minutes to talk about El Salvador. Um, El Salvador is located in Central America and it's the smallest country in the region. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. <laughs> um, the agricultural landscape in El Salvador is mostly crops and livestock, reaching 51% of the region, of the country. We still have small patches of forest throughout the country, especially in high elevations. Recent data indicates that the forest cover in the country is only 27%. Over the years, the forest has been reduced due to the expansion of the agriculture border. And with this, like you all know, um, poor agriculture practices, such, um, such as burning and excessive use of pesticides, causing not only an impact in our soil, but also an impact in the quantity and quality of our rivers and streams. The main crops in El Salvador are mostly corn, beans, and sorghum, followed by sugar cane and coffee in a larger scale. Corn, beans, and sorghum represent about 20% of the value of agriculture production in general in the country. So for Salvadorian, especially farmers, the importance of these crops is not only economical, but social, cultural, and environmental. Um, yeah, you see? Oh, in El Salvador, <laughs> we, ha we have 400 farmers. 
oh, sorry, 400,000 farmers. And a big majority are smallholders, rain-fed farmers. These farmers produce about 75% of the corn and beans consumed in the country. So if these far farmers have problems, we all do. The main issues that these farmers are facing in El Salvador, as you can see in the slide, is, I'm gonna uh, um, summary in three, is land tenure. 90% of the farmers have less than three hectares of land and the majority are renting these lands year by year. So this makes difficult for farmers to implement conservation practices in their farms. Number two is lack of technical assistance. Less than 10% of smallholder farmers in El Salvador have access to agriculture extension services. Most of the national agriculture budget goes to seeds, fertilizers, and pesticides in order to increase fruit food production without any assistance in conservation agriculture or land restoration. And three, extreme weather events. Erratic weather patterns, such as high intensity storms and frequently dry stretches during the rainy season, it's making it difficult to farmers to know, where, to know when to plant. As a response to these problems, CRS started working with local partners to promote water smart agriculture practices. Through the development of an extension network of farmers based on learning by doing methodology between field technicians, field promoters or community leaders and farmers. And why are we doing this? Because we know that the only way that farmers will adopt conservation practices is when they are seeing benefits, positive results in their farms. We are working across El Salvador with multiple local actors and in multiple contexts, coffee in the highlands and corn and beans in the lowlands. For example, we have the Blue Harvest Initiative, uh, which is basically the application of water smart agriculture practices in key watershed to protect and restore water resources. In El Salvador, this initiative is oriented on coffee farms located in medium and high elevations where water is being produced. Um, in numbers, uh, as you can see in the screen, we have reached 9,000 coffee farmers and 18,000 hectares of farms improved with water smart agriculture practices, and we, keep, we hope to keep growing. <laughs> and then we have raices, which mean roots in Spanish. It's, it's an eight-year initiative funded by the Howard G. Buffett Foundation to promote conservation agriculture in a larger scale. In four years, we were able to increase in 13% the numbers of farmers, and we have reached almost 4,000 hectares of land managed on, under water smart agriculture practices. Oh, yep. So, um, RAICES is not only building a network of, of farmers, but it's also creating a network of partners and local actors. As you can see in the screen, all of the dots in the map, that is the Western Territory that we're working on with raíces. And all of those dots are farmer field schools and each color represents one of our local partners. Um, so thanks to these efforts, it has been possible to establish a dynamic of co-creation with all of these partners allowing innovation and capacity building in the territory. The experience shows that agriculture landscape restoration based on water smart agriculture approaches and the extension network of farmers offers a great opportunity to restore degraded farmland and improve the livelihood of farming families. Raices and its partners have demonstrated clear benefits of water smart agriculture practices to a smallholder farmers. For example, we have farmers that, that have been part of the program of the Raices project, and they have been applying water smart agriculture for almost two or three seasons, and now they are getting higher yields, making the farms more productive. Building on lessons learned from water smart agriculture and Raices, we're starting to extend the impact in El Salvador by incorporating this approach into larger scale emergency response and resilience program with the financial support of USAID Bureau of Humanitarian Assistance. 
We have two programs, Raíces Chalatenango and Prospera, which means thrive in Spanish. These are, these are two short-term projects located in different parts of the country. Both projects are working at the community level to improve food security and to provide technical assistance on water smart agriculture to, farm, uh, to farming families. In order to recover from the impact of crop losses uh, due to extreme weather events. This map shows the growth and scaling of our work in the country, thanks to interventions of the raíces in Western Salvador, that's the green colored area, and the USA funded programs in the north and east of the country, those are the blue and orange colored area. Um, and with these three programs combined, uh, we have reached nearly 5,500 smallholder farmers who are implementing water smart agricultural practices and contributing to the restoration of the landscape. Um, in all of this experience, we have learned that keeping it simple and putting the farmers first is key for the success in each agriculture program. The decision to aim on a few water smart agriculture practices, such as cover crops, no burning, for recommendation, recommendation for fertilization, and crop stubble management, and to come up with field-based results makes the greatest difference for farmers. So, thank you. Thank you, Carla. Um, that was a great introduction to El Salvador and the context that we work in. Our next presenter is Carla Trujillo Pinate, the founder of Tierra, <laughs> Tierra Saludable Amayale, um, TSA as we'll refer to it, which means the source of healthy land. TSA is a local partner with the CRS Raices program that Carla just mentioned. Uh, it is founded by the Pinate Trujillo family to provide training and support to fellow farmers in their communities. The family has converted their four acre farm into a training center to experiment with conservation practices and to share results with neighboring farmers. Carla will share her experience building local extension networks to provide farmers support when adopting conservation agriculture. Carla Lara is going to get up and help with translation for Carla Trujillo. Gracias. Muy buenos días todavía. Buenos días a todos los presentes. Perdón. Good morning to everybody. Perdón, hablo español, 100% español. I'm sorry, I speak um, salvadoreño, Spanish por supuesto. All the time. Salvadorian. <laughs> eh, como muy bien Adams lo dijo, lo explicó. Eh, trabajo en el centro de en el centro de formación Tierra Saludable a Meyali desde el 2019. Um, like Adam said, uh, I work in Tierra Saludable Amayali, well, training center since 2019. Mi nombre es Carla Trujillo, y pues en esta mañana y en esta convención muy importante, felicito a todos los ponentes que han estado anteriormente temas muy interesantes para los que estamos haciendo algo por nuestros suelos y nuestra agua en el mundo. Okay, um, her name is Carla Trujillo, like Adam said. And she's congratulating everybody for being in this conference and because of all the work that we're doing. Me acompaña mi hija, la ingeniera Karen Peñate. Here with me is, my, is her daughter, Carla. <laughs> uh, Karen, I'm sorry. <laughs> mi esposo, Edwin Peñate, que está en otra convención. And her husband, Edwin Peñate, which is in, in another session. Um, temas de interés para el centro de formación y para nuestros agricultores. All of the topics here are very interesting for us, for our training center. Okay. ¿Quiénes somos? Um, desde el 2019, somos un centro de formación local enfocado en agricultura de conservación y restauración del paisaje agrícola. Um, so, who we are? Since 2019, we are a training center orientated in conservation, agriculture, and landscape restoration. Trabajamos con nuestros agricultores con una estrategia de extensión desde la comunidad para la comunidad. Um, the training center work um, through an extension strategy from the community to the community. Okay, pero ¿qué es la agricultura de conservación para nosotros como centro de formación 
que somos agricultores y trabajamos para agricultores. ¿Qué es para nosotros? So as a training center, we're working uh, for the farmers. Eh, como centro estamos generando pequeños cambios a través de la formación a los agricultores. Que quede claro, no les enseñamos a trabajar ni cómo cultivar porque ellos ya lo saben hacer. Um, as a training center, we are gener generating small changes through capacity building um, to farmers to make clear that we're not teaching them how to farm because they already, they already know how to do this. Lo que hacemos es brindar formación orientada en temas claves en agricultura, de conserva en agricultura sostenible. Nos enfocamos en pequeñas cosas que ayudan a mejorar la salud de los suelos y el buen uso de los recursos naturales. So what we do is to provide, um, to provide training on key issues in conservation agriculture, oriented in improving soil health and management of natural resource, resources. ¿Cómo se usa un centro de formación por la comunidad? Y usted se preguntará, estamos ahí dentro de la comunidad, no es una institución que viene de fuera y viene a enseñar al agricultor. So, how are we working? We are not like an institution that is coming from outside, but it's built like inside the community. We are a local actor. Como lo dije, el, el centro de formación es un actor local y las cosas que hacemos son accesibles dentro de la comunidad para cada una de las familias agricultoras. Um, all the activities that we're doing and all the actions and all the efforts, uh, what we do is our They are accessible within the community for each of the farming families. Contamos con un campo experimental que pertenece al Centro de Formación Tierra Saludable a Meyali. Esto, perdón. Uh, we also, inside the training center, we have an experimental farm. Este modelo es nuevo para el país y las comunidades alrededor. Um, this, um, this farm, this ex experimental farm, is, not, is new for the communities, but also new for the country. El centro de formación sirve para el aprendizaje en agricultura de conservación para técnicos o ingenieros agrónomos, promotores, agricultores y otras instituciones del país que están interesadas en la formación en agricultura de conservación. Um, so basically the main purpose of the, this experimental farm um, is to serve as a learning site for conservation agriculture to farmers, to field technicians, um, community leaders, and other institutions that are interested in water smart agriculture. ¿Qué es lo que hacemos? Trabajamos con la metodología Aprender Haciendo desde el agricultor para los agricultores. En, el, en nuestro campo experimental que cuenta con un jardín de variedades de cultivos de cobertura y otras áreas de investigación como la agricultura de conservación mecanizada y riego eficiente. Um, we work with the learning by doing methodology from farmers to farmers. In the experimental farm, we have um, the training center have a cover crop garden and other research areas, such so mechanized conservation and efficient irrigation techniques. Explicar algo. Eh, la agricultura de conservación mecanizada o el uso de maquinaria en agricultura de conservación es nuevo en el país. Uh, mechanized um, conservation agriculture is new for the country. Pero también lo vemos como una oportunidad para desarrollar e implementar prácticas que ayudan a facilitar la agricultura. But they also see it as an opportunity to develop and implement practices that help facilitate agriculture while, while farmers are doing it in the ground. Ya que estamos utilizando tecnologías al momento de realizar las, labo las labores en campo. Uh, because we're using technology uh, at the same time we're doing the uh, field work with the farmers. Agregar que pues la mayoría de jóvenes en las comunidades, no sé, en, en este país o en otros países de las personas que nos visitan, la mayoría de jóvenes ya no quieren desarrollar labores en agricultura. Um, just uh, uh, adding like a young people in El Salvador and maybe in other regions, um, they don't want to do any agriculture anymore. Um, porque las sienten demasiado pesados o fuertes. 
a la hora de hacerlas. Ahora le decimos, no, puedes sembrar. Mira, no utilizas el chuzo. Now we're telling them that it's not true, that you can use equipment. Ahora siembras a través de utilizar una sembradora y el uso de una chapodadora a la hora de hacer incorporación o manejo de rastrojos. And now we're like, like, she's, um, like she said before, we're doing, um, we're cultivating with um, using equipment, um, yep, and wh while planting and while stubble management, using these technologies and this equipment. Y esto se vuelve innovador para las familias agricultoras. And this is becoming innovating for farming families in El Salvador. Ya que en la mayoría de los territorios los jóvenes no identifican espacios de superación en la agricultura. Since in most of the rural area in El Salvador and territories, young people are just, um, they, they didn't see, they didn't have opportunities to work in agriculture. And now they do. ¿Qué resultados estamos observando? Para nosotros como país los resultados se están volviendo a través de nuestra estrategia se están volviendo exitosos y déjeme decirle que a través de la estrategia de extensión estamos construyendo un efecto multiplicador en la implementación de prácticas en agricultura de conservación. So what we, what we are building in the territory and through the extension strategy is a multiplier effect in the implementation of water smart agriculture practices. Okay. Los productores de la zona muestran evidencias en, su, en sus fincas, comparten lo aprendido en su centro de formación y lo comparten con su grupo de agricultores en su comunidad y los vecinos adoptan sus tecnologías generando cambios en sus fincas. Um, so basically what the extension strategy is that um, we're giving new knowledge to farmers and they are like implementing the new knowledge in their farms and sharing this experience with neighbors. So the neighbors are now adopting these technologies and, practi and practices and applying them on their farms. El acercar los conocimientos a la comunidad, esto mejora la calidad de vida de las familias y genera oportunidades. So by doing this, um, this is not only generating uh, a change in the mindset of farmers, but also an improvement and a quality in their lives with their families. Ya que las familias cuando transforman sus conocimientos, diversifican sus parcelas, generan más ingresos, tienen acceso a servicios básicos como es la educación y la salud. Um, because they have new knowledge and they, they are getting better incomes, they, this is also uh, providing them a better access to health and a quality of life. Hablar un poco de cómo iniciamos en el 2019 y déjeme decirle que fue un trabajo muy difícil porque cuando estás haciendo algo nuevo te dicen estás loco, esto no te va a funcionar. Um, I want to uh, talk up a little bit about our growth. And at the beginning, everybody was saying, oh, you're crazy because you're doing something new. And it was a hard job to, to start. <laughs> y en 2019, nacemos con cinco agricultores, o sea, cinco familias de la, comuni de la comunidad, empezando a conocer prácticas de agricultura de conservación. Uh, as you can see in the graphic, we started in 2019 with only five farmers, that means uh, five farming families, and we started with them to promote water smart agriculture practices. Déjeme decirle que para ese momento mi esposo y mi persona éramos quienes estábamos uh, junto al equipo de CRS, el equipo Raíces, llegando a estas familias y mostrándoles cómo hacer una agricultura diferente. In this year, at this point, we, it was just me and my husband and with the CRS, CRS team, and we were teaching these farmers to do these practices. La demanda de estas cinco personas fue, podemos enseñar lo que hemos aprendido a más personas en nuestra comunidad, a nuestros vecinos. So the demand of these five families, as they, they were like, can we start teaching this to other families? Para el 2021 nos constituimos legalmente como una empresa, un centro de formación en agricultura de conservación. So, 
So for 2021, um, we formalized our, our, like, our business our, uh, as, a, um, as a business, a small business. Thank you. Okay. Y contratamos pues ya un equipo técnico conformado por dos ingenieros agrónomos. And we were able to hire um, field technicians. Y llegamos a 172 familias mostrándoles las prácticas en agricultura de conservación. So with those changes, you were able to see in 2021 the growth that we, that we had. Y para no hacer muy largo el, el discurso, porque el tiempo es corto. Um, to make it short. <laughs> Eh, para el 2022 cerramos el año con 711 familias y logramos manejar 430 hectáreas, todas con agricultura de conservación. So as you can see, by the end of 22, uh, 2022, we had 711 farming families and um, for 430 hectares of managed area. Para el 2023 tenemos y estamos seguros que vamos a llegar a 1,500 familias agricultoras en nuestro país tan pequeño que es El Salvador y todas con prácticas de agricultura de conservación. So our hope is that for this year um, we were able to reach those, uh, the project of those uh, farming families and we want that all of those families are applying water smart agriculture. That's what we hope to reach. Déjeme añadir algo. La demanda no es solo del agricultor en edad promedio. La demanda es de agricultores con mucha edad, como el caso que vamos a mostrar a continuación. Um, now the demand of farmers is not just on the average, average age, but we also have demandings of older, older farmers. <laughs> Son mujeres sumándose a hacer agricultura y conservación. Mujeres uh, women que se suman. Too hacer agricultura de conservación. And we, we also have women now that are, that are becoming part of this transformation strategy. Y personas como don Carlos Ágreda, que tiene 76 años, y dijo, yo quiero aprender una nueva forma de hacer agricultura. And we have examples like Carlos Ágreda, he's, he's 72, and despite his age, he just wanted to learn about new techniques of doing agriculture, new practices. Carlos Sagreda es uno de nuestros promotores campeones en el norte de Huachapán, la zona norte de Huachapán. Y pues podemos hablar de Carlos Sagreda un poco, porque él no está aquí, por supuesto. Um, we can talk a little bit about Carlos Sagreda because he's not here, but he's one of our local champions in our training center. En el 2019 lo encontramos produciendo um, 41. Uh, 41 bushel eh, por acre a un costo de 46 de 462 dólares por acre um, in the graphic you can see that we found um, Carlos Agreda in 2000, uh, 2019 um, producing the green dots are the yields and the blue dots are the cost production Ahora, para el 2022, Carlos cerró su año produciendo 103 bushen por acre a un costo de 231 dólares por acre. So, in summary, um, you can see in the graphic that only in, in three years that he's been part of the training center, um, don, don Carlos, Carlos. <laughs> this champion has lowered his farm production cost by 50%, 50%, and increase his yield by 60%. Ha sido un proceso. A través de los años, Don Carlos ha bajado sus costos de producción. Está con nosotros desde el 2000, 2019. Y ahora, a través de los años, Carlos ha mantenido las prácticas sostenibles gracias a su constante trabajo. Ha logrado este cambio y transformación a pesar de su comentario. Soy un agricultor viejo, pero me adapto a los cambios. Um, so as you can see, like the results in the graphic, over the years, Carlos Agreda has applied water smart agriculture um, practices thanks to his effort and his constant work. And despite his comment, um, I'm an old farmer, but I adapt to change. Como centro de formación, estamos también fomentando una economía más estable, diversificando las fincas de los productores y mejorando 
no solo la seguridad alimentaria, sino también la salud y la educación de las familias. So as a training center, we are, we are also promoting a more stable economy in the families, in our communities by, di by diversifying their farms, and we're also improving food security, health and education uh, for the families. Creemos que es importante trabajar en la restauración de los suelos, el cuidado de los recursos, pero también es formar en las familias una institución fuerte que permite generar oportunidades para los jóvenes. Okay. <laughs> With the work that we're doing, um, we strongly believe that we are transforming families uh, into a strong institutions, giving better opportunities for young, pe for young people y que por supuesto el migrar no se convierta en una opción this, um, tratar de erradicar la desintegración familiar a causa del fenómeno de la migración en las comunidades atendidas this, reduce, um, the desi y hablando de mujeres campeonas tenemos a otro caso Liliana Belloso And talking about, about women champions, we have another um, story for you. It's Liliana Belloso. Es una agricultora joven, siempre de la zona occidental del país. En el 2019, Liliana era una ama de casa. No digo que esto es malo. Um, Liliana is a young farmer. In 2019, Liliana dedicated all of her time um, to her family. I'm not saying this is bad. Uh, dedicando todo su tiempo a su familia, pero al no tener oportunidades de estudiar o formarse académicamente para mejorar sus ingresos, Liliana estaba considerando migrar. Um, like, like I said before, Liliana dedicated all of her time to her family, but she was lacking opportunities to study and to improve her livelihood, so she was thinking about migrating. Ya que sus costos de producción eran demasiado altos y no veía oportunidades de superación en la agricultura para su familia. And also adding to this, um, her production costs were too high, so she didn't like had any other opportunities to pr uh, improve their, the, her incomes to her family for her family. En los últimos años, los costos de Liliana han mejorado, así como también sus ingresos. Ahora ella ha dejado de pensar en migrar y se encuentra en el proceso de transformación de sus suelos. Um, in recent years, uh, Liliana production costs have improved, as you can see in the graph. Now she has stopped thinking about migrating and she's in the process of transforming her souls, her soils. Ella ha logrado diversificar su finca, produciendo hortalizas y otras leguminosas, aumentando así sus ingresos para su familia. She has managed to diversify her farm. Um, and she's cultivating vegetables and with this she has, um, she has the opportunity to in improve her incomes for her family. Como centro de formación, creemos que es importante la recuperación de los suelos, pero también el fortalecimiento de líderes campeones que, como Liliana, trabajan en las comunidades y hacen la diferencia. As a training center, we believe that it's important to improve soil health, uh, but it's also, also to strengthen champion leaders like Liliana, who work in the communities and make a difference. Trabajamos desde la comunidad en un sistema integral como centro de, tra de, la forma de la transformación con una atención y asistencia técnica personalizada para cada uno de los agricultores. We work with and for the communities, which means that the family is always in the center. We provide a person-to-person -person technical assistance for each of the families. Creemos que si, creemos que si trabajamos, en, que si fomentamos una atención integral, estaremos generando cambios en todos los componentes que conforman una familia. We strongly be believe that by giving this kind of assistance, we can generate changes in all of the members of the family. Estamos trabajando en la restauración de los suelos y el empoderamiento de los líderes a través de la gestión local. As a training center, um, we are working on soil restoration and the empowerment of leaders through local management. Ahora, todos los agricultores formados tienen la demanda de dar pasos a mejorar la agricultura 
y demostrar que no solo se trabaja para subsistir, sino que se trabaja para salir adelante como familias agricultoras. And now with all of this work, now that the farmers are demanding to take steps to improve, to improve agriculture, and they want to demonstrate that they are not only working to subsist, but also to move forward as a family in the local economy. Muchas gracias por su tiempo y su atención. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Carla and Carla. Uh, our next speaker is Byron Kassoon. Uh, Byron is the co-founder of Raindrop Restoration Services. Raindrop is a small business in El Salvador that provides, oh, what happened to our, oh. <laughs> Raindrop is a small business in El Salvador that provides ecological restoration monitoring. Raindrop originally started as a training program for young people to learn restoration science with the RAICES project. The members of the training group saw an opportunity to provide services, provide monitoring services to NGOs, government programs, and local farmers, um, and they formed a small business around this, this idea. Uh, they now provide field monitoring services to multiple CRS projects, as well as other local clients. They have recently formed a nonprofit organization called Raindrop Impact Foundation to carry out their mission to restore and conserve landscapes in El Salvador through research, education, and restoration. Thanks, Alan. Good morning to everyone, and thanks for having me. My name is Byron Kasun. I am one of the, the founders of Raindrop, and I am currently in charge of communication and marketing. Raindrop is a small consultant company. It started in 2019 by a group of young people in the Aguachapan region of Eastern El Salvador. We bring data collection, analysis, education to NGOs and farmers in our region. We work primarily in agriculture and restoration. Today, I'm going to focus on our role inside the RAICES program. Raindrop collects data on the field to measure the impact of water smart agriculture conservation practices. And we have many different studies currently going. Today, I'm going to share three of them. First, vegetation coverage and bird ground monitoring. Due to changing climate and widespread degradation of soils and landscape in El Salvador, we adapted every land protocols to fit the variety of conditions found in El Salvador. While unconventional to apply every land techniques in the rainy environment, we found, we found the protocols to be effective in providing data. Equally important, they provide tools to communicate with farmers about what is happening on their farms and how water smart agriculture practices improve their soils and crops. We adopted protocols like belt transit, soil stability, production, line point intercept, and photogrammetry. By monitoring vegetative cover and bird ground, we were able to determine how water smart agriculture practices change that type of ground cover and more importantly, the amount of bird ground. We measure the impacts of water smart agriculture practices at different critical moments throughout the year. So increasing vegetation cover substantially reduces erosion and increases infiltration. These two factors increase production while protecting the watershed downstream. Understanding the amount of ground cover is a key indicator for soil health, erosion, water infiltration, and biomass for carbon sequestration. When we started our project, it was common for farmers to leave fields fallow with little ground cover between, between growing seasons. Samples collected in April 2022 indicate the average program participant has over 
90% ground cover during the driest period of the year. This greatly improves soil stability during major rain events, especially in the growing season. The second study is soil erosion plots. In early 2021, RAICES program established two erosion monitoring sites to provide visual evidence on how water smart agriculture practices reduces soil erosion and runoff. These erosion plots were set up for corn and for coffee. Raindrop collects data after each rain event to create a database on runoff and soil erosion. This plot demonstrated that by increasing year-round vegetative cover by 30 to 50 percent, soil erosion decreased by nearly 100 tons per hectare and improving, improving infiltration of over 1,000 cubic meters of rainfall per hectare. Oh, sorry. So you can see the difference between the treatments in, in the photos. The plot with bare ground associated with slash and barn agriculture filled more than three barrels with sediments. Traditional practices that leave some residue reduce, reduce erosion to only one barrel, a great improvement, but water smart agriculture practices reduce erosion to a cup full of soil per plot. So our goal is to help people to make better decisions, provide information in order to have a better world. And this part, in my opinion, is one of the most complicated things. How can we share data with farmers? And I cannot continue with this without talking about our friend, Andres Bravo. He is a farmer Raindrop works with. He is the owner of the land where we set up the soil erosion plot for corn. And now he is the ambassador of this research. He has graciously allowed many farmers, educators, and researchers to visit his farm in his erosion plots. He is a passionate believer in water smart agriculture practices and spreads the message of this. He has adopted these practices and he is convinced about the impact of carrying his soil. And he tries to convince more farmers close to him, close to him, not just by word, but with evidence. Water smart agriculture practices has allowed him to double yields while reducing cost. This is a life changing for him in his family. This makes his farm economically sustainable while improving the, the environment of his farm and of that downstream, downstream watershed. Collecting data, research, statistics, all the information is great, but it is in vain, it is not worse, if it is not shared with farmers or participants. We collected detailed data on this plot as shown by this, this slide, but ed education doesn't need to be complex data or a graph most farmers wouldn't understand it. For example, if we share this graph with farmers, I imagine Andres Bravo looking at it and saying, what is that? Maybe he wouldn't understand it. But if we show this slide, completely different. It's the same, but different. He could give us a whole presentation about this with this one slide. Again, it is important to collect information, to conduct scientific research, 
but it's, but it's more important to translate that information so that we are all able to understand it. Our farmers are not going to change what they do because of a lot of data on a PowerPoint slide. But they will look at this photo and ask more questions. Even better, they will come to the erosion plot and see the difference for themselves. It is just looking over the fence that Rainbow believes is our best educational tool. The last one study is about drones. We have found drones to be valuable tools for our work. We are incorporating drone photogrammetry and sophisticated analysis into our data set. We use aerial photos to help us to compare what are, what are smart agriculture practices and traditional agriculture practices. Images are updated three times a year to track impacts on land over time. With this, we, we can study the difference in plant color, size, coverage, and crop density. Water smart agriculture practices show improved plant develop, development and better soil cover. Bare soil coverage improves soil moisture, reduces soil erosion, and favors nutrient absorption. Drones are a powerful tool that can be used to track changes of landscapes over time. But like the erosion plots for us, our drones imagery is a powerful communication tool. We can show farmers what their practices look like from above. Aerial, aerial images tell story of bare ground and vegetation cover better than any graph or, or data table. So this is what Raindrop does, collect scientific data, synthesize and simplify the data to educate farmers and show them that water smart agriculture works and it will make their farms better. And more importantly, it will make their leaves better and make the, the, the lives of others better. We would like you to work with us as a partner. So I introduce you Raindrop Impact, a registered nonprofit foundation in the USA that was established to raise money to help Raindrop help to make the world a better place. Raindrop and Raindrop Impact Foundation want to create education and research programs to get young people involved with technology and agriculture. So we want to continue helping people to make better decisions. Muchas gracias. Thanks so much for listening. All right, thank you, Byron. <clears throat> so we have uh, more speakers. Uh, or we have one more speaker. But before we get into speakers, we thought we'd kind of break up the session a little bit and open up some question and answer. Uh, so to do that, I've asked Jack Alexander to, to help uh, facilitate a little question, question and answer. Jack has been working uh, with the RAICES program and visiting El Salvador uh, for, since 2019 and has been a mentor and a, tr and a lead trainer for Raindrop. So if there's any questions, um, we'd love to hear from the audience before continuing on, taking a, a quick break before the, the, the panel. Good. Great, thank you. Uh, myself, uh, Sachin Nangude from India. Uh, basically, I have a question for the Byron uh, regarding uh, the soil erosion data. Uh, is uh, what are the water smart agriculture practices which are different from the traditional agriculture which has implemented over there? Thanks for thanks for your question. Uh, the difference between traditional agriculture and conservation agriculture is uh, it could be very simple. Uh, 
traditional agriculture, um, I was growing, doing traditional agriculture, burning the soil, um, using a lot of chemicals. That's the way that the majority of people in El Salvador used to, used to farm. And traditional agriculture is using cover crops, less chemicals. It's about conserving our soil and our water. So uh, based on that, uh, basically, uh, you said about the soil erosion is 100 tons per hectare, isn't it, uh, uh, in your slide? Uh, yeah, it, it is a, st a study, that is a research that we have established. So is it a me measured value or the estimated values with some modeling? Yeah, it's, it's measured, yeah. Uh, so what is the rainfall, uh, average rainfall of the Salvador? Or your study area? Yeah, 2,000 millimeters a year. Yeah. So, sorry? 2,000 millimeters. 2,000 millimeters. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks to you. Thank you. And one little correction. Byron said traditional agriculture when he got to cover crops, but he meant water smart agriculture there. Yeah. So. Um, Can, yeah, go ahead, please. Okay. Um, I, hablo español, así que puedo hacer la pregunta en español, y, and then I will translate to everybody. Um, muchas gracias por la presentación. Yo, yo soy investigadora, y estos, este tipo de, 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 de muestras de, de suceso me da mucha, mucha um, esperanza. Uh, mi pregunta es, porque yo estoy en la educación, ¿Tienen alguna uh, colaboración con alguna universidad en El Salvador o con otras universidades en otros lugares? Porque mi pregunta es, ¿ustedes enseñan? ¿Quién les enseña a ustedes? ¿Y de dónde toman esta información? Ok. Um, oh, shit. I forgot my question in English. <laughs> uh, I, ask, I ask them who is teaching them because they are teaching the farmers and they're having this contact with the community. So I'm asking if they have a collaboration with a university in El Salvador or somewhere else. So where do they get this, this information? Ah, y, ¿Y cuál ha sido las, la, la mejor estrategia para colaborar con los... Um, yeah, con los farmers. Oh, man. Agriculture. Gracias. Uh, yeah, so and what was the best strategy to collaborate with farmers and make that collaboration successful as you have shown? Gracias. Muchas gracias por la, por la pregunta. Uh, I'll start with an answer and then I'll let Carla uh, also answer. Um, in terms of who we're collaborating with, yes, we've been trying to, since the very beginning, since 2019, we've been building collaborations with multiple um, investigation centers. We've been working with SIAT um, for uh, uh, soil erosion. We're working with SIAT. Uh, we've been working with Jack Alexander from Resource uh, Synergy Resource Solutions. Um, we have, for every study, we've worked with an expert to backstop the, the technical side, the experimental design uh, and the technical side. For uh, Amayale, for TSA, uh, we've also brought in any opportunity we have to collaborate, uh, bring in experts, uh, share experiences, because it's also not about just bringing in to train, but to bring in, uh, discuss together, mm -hmm. and then identify what works in the context. Um, so the, an the short answer is uh, yes, and we're looking for more. Um, so we, you know, we'd love to work with more research institutions, um, that would like to come down and visit what we're doing. You know, we've, we've talked about this idea of the data that Raindrop collects as a sandbox. Um, we can't, as a program, analyze every different question, and there's a lot of different questions. Um, so yeah, we, we're really interested, and I'll let um, other people on the panel also answer. Bien. En el tema de formación, y en el tema de investigación, Jack muy bien lo dijo, estamos atrayendo todo lo que sea investigación, pero también estamos 
formando jóvenes, como el caso de Raindrop, estamos formando jóvenes, como el caso de Karen Peñate. Son pro oh. I, I can translate. We only have one mic. <laughs> um, so like um, Carla is saying, what, what Adam is saying, that also to, to work with institutions, ASEAD and um, other, other partners that we have, but we're also doing is to work with young people so, and it's a great example. We have Biden here and we have Karen in the audience. audience. Creo que se me fue la idea. No. <laughs> y estamos hablando, estamos hablando que sí hay academia, sí hay educación a nivel del de Salvador interesados en formar a sus jóvenes profesionales en temas claves de agricultura sostenible. And, and to summarize, we, in El Salvador, we do have um, academic and universities and institutions that are willing to work with young people um, to improve their education. Como centro de formación y equipo, estamos buscando apoyo para, como Adam decía, para atraer más para investigación, pero también aprender más para enseñar a jóvenes. So, um, what, what Adam said, that we're bringing institutions from outside to work with us and to teach us, but we are also, like, we're learning, but we are also teaching um, the farmers and young people. Por ejemplo, el Ministerio de Educación de El Salvador, eh, a través de los bachilleratos, ha puesto a la orden a, a su grupo de jóvenes para que sean formados. Eh, somos como el complemento lo que los bachilleratos no tienen en su currícula, nosotros lo tenemos en nuestro campo experimental. Raindrop lo tiene y todos los demás que estamos involucrados en el tema. Um, so in El Salvador, uh, we're working with the education uh, ministry and they, in the high school, we have um, technical high school in agriculture and basically what the, if they don't have like a subject or like a, a key specific topic, we can serve to as a complementary of those, like just train, uh, Amayali Training Center and Raindrop. Yep. Okay. Abrimos espacios para jóvenes en sus pasantías para que vayan y aprendan con nosotros, pero también nosotros aprender de sus conocimientos en la academia. And we're also opening spaces for um, internships, of young people internships, so they can come to Amayali Training Center and we can start the collaborations. Eh, yo creo que esto sería mejor platicarlo en el lunch, pero para informarles, hay una red de investigadores que nos llamamos Geolatinas y este, si el enfoque es unir a la, a la comunidad latinoamericana en, en investigación para apoyar proyectos como los de ustedes, así que sí, hay que hablar. Uh, I just uh, said that there is a big community here in the U.S. and in the world that is called Geolatinos, and it's a community of researchers from Latin America that we're trying to support this type of, of projects. So, yeah. Thank you. Gracias. Hello. Namaskar ji. I'm Milind Muzumdar from Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology, Pune, India. Uh, and we are involved in cosmic ray soil moisture sensor monitoring with uh, and collaborating with uh, Professor Trentran France from Nebraska Lincoln University. So I just want to know this, uh, it's a very good presentation about community involvement of the community training. Similarly, in India also we have several NGOs, uh, for example, WOTR. This is one of the NGO which work with very closely with the farmers. So do you have any attempt to for uh, involving this uh, community um, uh, for uh, measuring the soil moisture, soil temperature, field scale soil moisture, soil temperature using low cost sensors, assembling the low cost sensor. This is what we are doing, trying to do and um, we are working with the NGOs. So do you have any, any attempt for this uh, soil moisture, soil temperature measurements? That data may be very valuable. Of course, we are working on scientific aspect uh, impact of the monsoon and things, but uh, apl application, agriculture application may be more useful. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that question, that comment. Um, I'll go ahead and answer that one is, um, yes, we have plans to do it. We're working um, for more 
more tools to provide more soil information to the producers we're working with. And importantly, we're trying to work on how to um, not only collect that data, but to communicate that data um, as we work um, towards the idea that measuring soils and soil health and soil microbes are the whole, t that's the tool the farmers have to work with. So we give Jane, give her. <laughs> All right, we're going to have another um, opportunity for, for question and answer, so really thank you for those questions, and we're going to open up some more space. And thank you, Jack, for facilitating that. Um, our next speaker is the namesake for this session, Jenny Barron, is a professor of agricultural water management at the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences. Jenny will share her experiences working in rain fed systems. Jenny was just in El Salvador uh, and, and came to visit our work, so um, thank you, Jenny, for being here. Thank you very much for having me. It's, it's really um, <laughs> touching that your uh, uh, that work that I didn't even know was inspiring, actually inspired. And so, so for me, it's a rare occasion to, to be able to, to claim that. But what is more important is, is how work outside can inspire me as a researcher. And I'll, I'll try to just share a few slides on that perspective. Um, so, uh, this morning, Peter McCormick was uh, referring briefly to the rain-fed systems. And the rain-fed systems is um, um, under a lot of pressure and challenges equally as much as our irrigated land. And globally, 75% uh, of our crop land and, and all the, most of the grazing land, uh, in addition, is rain-fed. And so if we are going to be water secure as well as food secure future, the like uh, Mark Smith was telling us, we have to address our food systems sourced from our rain-fed lands as well. And rain -fed, rainfall, we can't do very much about, but we can look after our soils and our vegetation uh, in, a, in a productive or more smart way, as in here, we call it water smart agriculture. But of course, it has many names, such as land restorations or soil health improvements. Um, but the essential thing is that it's connected and the soil health has such a big implication on what type of water we have downstream, both in quantity and quality, as Carla was mentioning in the beginning. And what are the needs forward? Yes, we know that global assessments, IPCC or FAO has provided us with numbers on how much we need to address our healthy soils to get healthy waters forward. We, um, uh, me, together with, with a group of researchers, we had uh, uh, a little project as a background to uh, the 2020 FAO uh, state of food systems uh, report, which is the annual production that FAO provides. And in 2020, it was overlooking, um, overcoming water scarcity in agriculture. It was the first time in uh, more than 20 years that FAO had uh, that flagship report about agriculture water. We did a small study and invited a couple of cases around the world to tell us how the process moving from maybe a, a degraded, not so productive, smallholder farming or medium farming um, uh, system has gone to, to sort of come into a more productive state or at least a more productive and sustainable trajectory forward. Uh, we had four cases and they were all written by the experts uh, and, and uh, uh, we had one case from Central America about the water smart agriculture journey that you started in uh, around 2012, 2014 and that we have now heard about the segment that has been worked on since 2017, 18 and forward. We had a case from India, one on the Ethiopian land, uh, smart, uh, sustainable land management initiatives and, and one in Brazil. They are all very, very different but they also had some generic similarities that we thought were interesting. I will not share all of it, but I'll just 
take two examples for you. Um, and the first case is from ICRISAT that provided with our partnership in, in uh, India, in Bundelakhan area. And perhaps our colleagues who were from India, I'm not really sure if maybe you were even involved. Um, it was a research and innovation co-design uh, for farming systems under new rainfall regimes. And essentially, during the turn of the century, um, uh, farmers were experienced increasing aridity and the traditional rainwater harvesting uh, management system in the, in the landscape was no longer viable. And um, they were approached researchers uh, to help them co-design an improved rainwater harvesting system for their catchments. Um, and uh, by doing so, uh, they started to pilot these over the years. And they also put in very detailed hydrological monitoring to show, because of course you have to account for all the water that is being used. Uh, this was so successful that local governments and regional governments later picked it up under different sources of funding uh, to scale it to, to bigger landscapes. And the impact that uh, were at the time of the writing of the case study is more than 20,000 farmers being involved, yield increases of 50%, uh, crop diversity and agribusiness diversity, and water infiltration uh, with reduced runoff to, to 30 to 50% in the catchment scale. These are substantial numbers. 20,000 farmers in my country, Sweden, we only have 16,000 farmers, full-time farmers, all together for the whole country. The example that has been described here today about scaling water smart to agricultural is no small defeat either. And, and the, the, the interesting thing, just as in the Indian case, was that they did have a, a considerable engagement with researchers and science evidence approaches in their process of development, together with starting with the farmer's needs and the farmer's perspective in the co-design. And as we heard uh, here, this, this was a much shorter process and we heard the numbers of 3,500 farmers and again, the total number of farmers in the country is 400,000. So you're almost reaching, you're getting closer to 1% of the total farm production in a country. These are, again, no small numbers. I, I think here, I, on the, on the right-hand side, I just picked some of that uh, monitoring data, which is representing 970 farmers yields in a specific rainfall regime showing the importance of knowing your crop nutrient nutrient or your soil nutrient status for this uh, this specific technology to be efficient in a specific rainfall regime and that monitoring data that Byron was helping to collect for the program, helping to get those big numbers of data together, is, is then really crucial to be able to tell new farmers, where does this work? Does this work in your soil? Does it work in your uh, rainfall regime? And how much can you expect this to be beneficial for your business? I just want to, to say also that, uh, Whilst we are, have heard or maybe spoken a lot about the droughts and our uh, irrigation investments forward, we have to keep in mind that we also need investments to find uh, the water and soil system in the rain-fed systems if we are going to be climate resilient and food secure forward. And transformations we think happens in productive landscape and they can be measured environmental, economic or social as we've heard examples of today. But the processes that it takes um, are maybe um, in the cases that we explored, they were like 
from 10 to 15, maybe even longer time periods, and they needed to have sustained investment to achieve those long-term goals. So projects with a horizon of three years are really challenging to get this scaled, scaling and impact. Other critical components that we found in our specific cases, and maybe you have such cases in your experience, is that the farmer-centric, the landowner-centric approach, the co-creation, and the evidence-based or monitoring that follows so you can adapt and learn when things don't go as you thought they might. But it also helps you to uh, avoid reinventing wheels and make your solutions context specific. So again, I just want to make that call that please, whilst we of course need to focus on irrigation and investments for irrigation for food and nutrition, we also have to think what type of investments do we need to do on that other piece of land, those 75% of our global cropland to make those resilient to climate change and sustainably managed for food security. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. And thanks to our whole panel. Um, we're, we have the opportunity for some more questions here. We have a few minutes before we go to lunch. And then we'll have a quick wrap up. Um, if anybody else has any questions, you can um, go to the microphones in the center. Or if I feel like I need to really pester you, I'll come um, do a Jerry Springer and run up in the crowd and, in honor of his passing last week. So um, our title for today, and feel free to interrupt me and go to the microphones, otherwise you have to listen to me, um, is to data that matters. That's the only part of the title because it's really long. But we both we looked at soils and data that mattered. One of the challenges we have is that it's easy to collect a lot of data. We can set up instruments that collect data multiple times per second, and we can create enough numbers um, that it overwhelms the most diligent of PhD students. Uh, but what, what really matters is what data we can collect that changes behavior of farmers on the ground and changes the, uh, um, what happens with, with soil and water and then with the plants. Go ahead with your question. A uh, question from one of our online participants, Shannon Henkin asks, are farmers trusting of research and scientists that are connected to the community and also those not connected to the community? Can I answer that one? So I, this goes off of what everybody's um, think. You're in luck because you didn't have to listen to my presentation because you ask enough questions. But one of the things that came in an earlier question was um, what universities in, are you working with? But one of the things that CRS has done and um, TSA and these other groups is allowed um, non-traditional uh, people working in the community um, who are c consultants, um, David Gandhi from India, um, myself and um, Derek, to come in and bring in things that are not the university. And what they're trying to do is bring in uh, innovators and early adopters that are working in the agricultural field to reach out to the innovators and early adopters in um, El Salvador and these other communities because those are the ones really making change. And, the, and to answer, I'm directly getting to Shannon's question, is that the bulk of the producers are not making changes based on what the researchers are telling them or what the NGOs are telling them. They're making changes based on looking over the fence at the early adopters and the innovators. And so our program is not designed to have CRS educate a lot of farmers. What our program is designed to do is have CRS, um, TSA, Rena Ser, um, Raindrop support the innovators and early adopters. And our whole educational program is like Byron said, farmers looking over the fence because if they look over the fence and see someone whose uh, inputs have dropped by 20 to 40 percent and their yields have increased by 60 to 100 percent, they're going to see that difference in income and they're going to see uh, that important line of the blue and the green crossing to profitability. Profitability is sustainability. 
I really liked the talk yesterday where they said what we're trying to do um, with the Kickstart campaign and the um, uh, irrigation campaign in uh, Africa is to help farmers make a lot of money. The farmers who are making a lot of money, the other farmers are going to watch them. So, any more questions? Do we have any more online questions? Okay. Please. I'm Dale McDermott from uh, the Water for Food Institute. A uh, question for Jenny. Uh, I probably missed it, but I didn't get a, a clear understanding of what the tools were that you were using to help uh, uh, farmers uh, improve yields and improve uh, performance in raid and fed uh, agriculture. So uh, how are they doing that? Oh, I cannot answer for all the farmers in the world. No. <laughs> Clearly no. in El Salvador here we have, uh, I mean here they picked up specific technologies. But in the case studies that we had as this background report, it was to, to highlight that um, actually uh, improvements are happening. And, and in the specific case in, in India, they had um, they had a traditional uh, system of uh, rainwater harvesting called Havelis, where they uh, collect infiltration from surface runoff and they store it either in, the, in surface uh, tanks or the, to the shallow groundwater. Mm -hmm. yeah? So uh, in, in, in the case, case of El Salvador, obviously they have the conservation farming approach, uh, not so mechanized all the time. And in um, uh, the Ethiopian uh, land sust uh, sustainable land management um, program, you have a range of uh, soil and water conservation practices from ter terraces, infiltration bunds, and so on. So they are, the technologies themselves are, are, were different, and this is what we wanted to have represented in the, in the case studies. But what we wanted to capture is this case, uh, the process over many years how different partnerships uh, are essential to enable that scaling and getting farmers using uh, better technologies as we have seen and being much better detailed here uh, from the El Salvador case. But there are some general patterns and, and uh, I think that we need to learn more systematically from these processes and understand the length it takes uh, for, for those processes of change to happen. Thanks. Thank you. Hello. Completar, completar la pregunta. Um, dos ejemplos. Eh, número uno el agricultor reduce sus costos porque no mecaniza sus suelos, que al final eso aumenta sus costos. Yeah. So, two, two examples specific. Uh, one of the biggest examples for cost reduction in the case of TSA has been introducing uh, um, mechanized equipment, uh, tractor-pulled conservation equipment, uh, reducing uh, labor costs uh, greatly. Mm -hmm. um, so that'd be one specific example. Con agricultura de conservación utiliza dos implementos. Número uno es una chapodadora que ayuda al manejo de rastrojos y dos la sembradora. Eso aumenta la densidad de siembra en el área, entonces es más producción por área. Um, so with that equipment, uh, two um, two important things are happening. One is increasing the density of um, planting. Um, and then the other is before planting, they're, they're um, mowing, um, creating a base layer of soil cover, and that's reducing the need for uh, herbicide um, mm. applications mm -hmm. greatly. So those are two very specific ways to increase productivity while also decreasing the uh, input costs. Thank you. Yeah. One more question right here. We have more time for more, but we do have another one. Okay. Uh, thank you for the insightful presentation for all the speakers. So I have a question for uh, most of the speakers. As you all work with farmers, uh, so is there any challenges to communicate the new technologies to the farmers and how you overcome that? 
Um, and also because I previously work with smallholders farmers uh, in oil palm in Indonesia, and it's quite hard to uh, keep their spirit to implementing the new technologies that we introduce. Thanks for your question. And in my personal opinion, uh, I'm a drone pilot. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to talk about specific in, in that tool that we use. When we come to the farmer and we introduce a drone as a technology for agriculture, they get excited. So they, they get like, oh, what's that? What? And yeah, they get excited. And it's not, for me, it's not, um, it, it's very easy to introduce this tool. And we, we take photos of the, of the land we show we show them the, the photos they can see they, they have another perspective of the land so in that case for me is 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 easy i don't know if okay El adoptar prácticas para los agricultores, adoptar tecnologías es difícil. Uh, to adopt practices can be can be difficult. Uh, agreeing with your statement. Hemos tenido retos. We've pero, had a lot of challenges. Pero estamos trabajando el tema de formación y es y generación de conocimientos en las comunidades. But what we've really seen to to help is the fact that we're present in the communities continuously to provide that support. No hay una receta para todos los agricultores, cada uno es un caso diferente. And there's not a recipe that we're giving broadly across areas. Um, each farmer has their own context and needs and that individual support is what's very important. Pero sí uno de los más principales es el dejar conocimientos en cada uno de los agricultores para que ellos puedan transferir a través de sus propias experiencias. And what the most the most important is to leave that understanding and um, new information with the farmer so that they understand in a way that they're able to take it on and also to share it um, with their with their neighbors and, and, and others. Esto se vuelve un efecto multiplicador. Y cuando un agricultor reduce costos, el otro quiere reducir costos y pregunta cómo hacerlo. And that's what we're seeing as a as a multiplying effect. And, and it really, it comes back to the topic of cost. Uh, when farmers are seeing their costs go down, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real motivator. Thank you. Just a small thing. I guess if, if you are going to be a researcher or continue as a researcher, I think that this is a very important perspective, that trust, yeah? Trust, who do, who, who, if you want somebody to be affected, they need to have trust. And I think some of our pitch talks earlier also talked about the importance of trust for a change. Thank you for the answers. Great. Okay, we're in our last three or four minutes here. If we don't have any more questions, I'll go ahead and wrap it up and then we will go to the all important part of eating lunch, which Thank you to this conference for feeding us very well, three or four or five times a day, whatever it is. Um, so, uh, in one of the principles that we're working on in teaching our, um, working with the early adopters and our innovators is that it takes, the understanding it takes to do something is about one X. And the, the understanding that it takes to, com, to teach it to someone else is about 10x. And what we're trying to do is give our, our farmers that we're working with, this 1% that have come into our programs, the ability to move from 1x to 10x, and then that's where the trust comes, and that's how um, other farmers are willing to come on. And it's that 10x factor that keeps their enthusiasm going when the experiments don't work. With um, innovators, it's easy because they love things that fail because then they get to do something different. Um, with uh, uh, early adopters, they like to see the innovators fail because they get to do something different without failing. 
And then with the bulk of our producers, what they want to do is see that it's working. And what we found um, and what we're trying to do to summarize the um, whole thing is there's three ways that we create change in the community, three ways that we create change on the farms, three ways that we even that we create change um, in the soil microflora and microfauna is the first is a change in technology. And that's what a lot of this conference is about. Here's a new technology, here's a new irrigation, here's a new soil, here's a new um, uh, soil in, uh, moisture monitoring tool. Um, and then the other is the thing that the, another big part of this uh, conference is about is to communicate. Once we've figured out what those new technologies are, we have to get the communication. The three or 400 or 500 of us that are at this conference can't talk to all the farmers in the world, but we can talk to somebody who knows somebody. And by the time we talk to somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody, we can get to all 400,000 farmers in El Salvador. We can get to all the farmers in the world. So we gotta just talk to people so we can communicate change. Um, change in agriculture, Although we'd like to think that it's a wholesale thing, and I will make my one minute, it, it really is retail politics. We gotta go talk one part where has to talk to another. As we learned yesterday, farmers don't like to learn in groups, they like to learn one-on-one, -on -one, so we have to go teach one-on-one. -on -one. And the last thing, and uh, what we're all here to do is provide support, and that support comes in a couple of different ways. The obvious one, one is financial support, and that's the role of the NGOs and the governments. But the other is the emotional support, the friendship support, the one-on-one -on -one trust support, that it's, all right, let's go. It's another hot day and another day to go farming. Let's go do the things we have to do. Thank all of you to be here. We were told that we'd probably have 25 to 30 people at this session, and we thought we'd be in a room where hopefully it'd have 25 and we'd have five people standing room only. We didn't realize we'd have a room that would seat 4,211, but over 60 people came to this, and we really appreciate all of you that did. Thank you very much. Thanks to Raindrop TSA. And, and we have plenty of cards and swag up here if you want it to. And thanks for CRS for sponsoring this for us. And water for food.